Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. One of the greatest scientific hoaxes of the 20th century was Piltdown Man. In 1912, Charles Dawson and Smith Woodward claimed to have found the link between apes and humans. But their evidence was completely fraudulent. What they did was piece together fragments of a human skull and an orangutan skull. They claimed they'd found the missing link, but what they actually did was piece together two incompatible pieces of evidence. Then they pretended that their scientific fraud represented something really important, and they fooled the scientific community for decades. Fast forward to the end of the 20th century, and Michael Mann from Penn State University did something very similar. Let's look at the background of what he did. This temperature diagram was from the 1990 United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report. It showed a very warm medieval warm period and a very cold little ice age. There's lots of evidence for a medieval warm period. Glaciers in the Rocky Mountains and the Alps were either very small or non-existent around this warm time. The English wine industry was competitive with France. The climate in England now is not warm enough for a top-notch wine industry. Vikings farmed in Greenland in places where the soil is now frozen. There's lots of evidence that the medieval warm period was warmer than current temperatures. The medieval warm period was widely agreed upon in the scientific community and there wasn't any serious dissent. There's also lots and lots of documented evidence that it was very cold during the Little Ice Age. The Earth exited the coldest part of the Little Ice Age around the year 1650. And then beginning about 1850, Earth warmed some more until about 1940, after which it started cooling again. This diagram represented the settled science of the United Nations in 1990. The medieval warm period was a huge problem for people pushing global warming. This warmth couldn't be explained by greenhouse gases. So the people pushing global warming decided to make the medieval warm period disappear. In 2006, Dr. David Deming of the University of Oklahoma gave this testimony to the U.S. Senate. He received an astonishing email from a major researcher in the area of climate change. The email said, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. And that's exactly what Michael Mann did in the 2001 United Nations report. The 1990 report was a reasonable interpretation of Earth's history over the last thousand years, but it was replaced by a completely fake hockey stick. The hockey stick showed 900 years of steady cooling, followed by extremely rapid warming after the year 1910. This graph was used by the U.S. government to try to show a correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature. Scientific American explained how the hockey stick graph was created. They combined tree rings, ice cores, and coral with thermometer readings from the past century. And they threw out inconvenient data which didn't support their story. In ClimateGate emails, this was described as Mike's nature trick and hiding the decline. I will explain this in more detail in a few minutes. The abuse of data to create the hockey stick was very similar to the abuse of data to create Piltdown Man. Michael Mann received a huge amount of criticism for his very bad science, so he angrily denied that he actually did what he did. He said, No researchers in this field have ever, to our knowledge, grafted the thermometer record onto any reconstruction. But that's exactly what Michael Mann did. Josh, the cartoonist, explained what Michael Mann did. If you're not familiar with this, it's worth pausing the video and reading through all six frames. A number of people working on the 2001 IPCC report were not thrilled by Michael Mann's fraudulent graph. This article was written by The Guardian about 10 years ago, back in the days when they still occasionally did actual journalism. The article discussed the disagreement between the researchers involved in writing that report. There was another temperature graph created by Keith Briffa and Phil Jones, which showed a completely different story. Man's graph was clearly the more compelling image of man-made climate change. The other dilutes the message rather significantly. Briffa made it clear that he did not believe Michael Mann's graph was the correct one. And he said that the medieval warm period was just as warm as it was now. But for policymakers, Michael Mann's graph was the clear favorite. It allowed them to scare the public into accepting a largely non-existent relationship between the burning of fossil fuels and Earth's temperature. 
So the decision to go with Michael Mansgraf was largely due to influence from policymakers rather than from scientists. Now let's look at Briffa's temperature reconstruction, which was completely different from Michael Mann's. Briffa's reconstruction showed the warmest period since 1400 occurred around the year 1940. And after 1940, temperatures dropped dramatically into the 1970s, after which they started to warm back up again. This graph shows the divergence between Michael Mann's hockey stick and Keith Briffa's temperature graph. Michael Mann completely erased the cooling which occurred from 1940 into the 1970s. The cooling after the 1940s was very real though. In 1961, the New York Times reported a unanimous consensus that Earth had been cooling. The National Academy of Sciences showed that the Northern Hemisphere had cooled dramatically since 1938. The March 1st, 1975 Science News cover was titled The Ice Age Cometh and they showed glaciers plowing through downtown Manhattan. In 1970, the New York Times wrote, The United States and Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Temperature data from Iceland confirms what the New York Times was saying in that 1970 article. You can see a dramatic cooling after 1940 at Reykjavik, Iceland. By the 1970s, seaports around Iceland, which had been ice-free for a century, became choked with ice once again. This temperature graph from the National Center for Atmospheric Research from 1974 also showed a dramatic cooling after 1940. And they showed that temperatures were cooler in 1970 than they were a century earlier in 1870. We see that same cooling in the Breffa Jones graph. But the cooling disappeared in the hockey stick. And remember that the blade of the hockey stick was created from government temperature graphs. Recent NASA temperature graphs have completely erased the post-1940 cooling reported by the National Center for Atmospheric Research in 1974. This 2009 ClimateGate email was very revealing. The top government climate scientists made it clear that they wanted to get rid of the warmth of the 1940s. They said it would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we're still left with why the blip. They wanted to alter the temperature record without any scientific justification. And that's exactly what they did. They altered the temperature data to make the 1940s blip go away. And that's how they created the hockey stick blade. Now let's take a little closer look at the Briffa temperature reconstruction, which is far more credible. It showed that the warmest period of the last 600 years occurred around the year 1940. And it showed that the first half of the 20th century was warmer than the second half. There's lots of evidence that the first half of the 20th century was warmer. The United States has by far the largest and most complete temperature data set in the world. This was the official U.S. temperature graph from NASA in 1999. It showed the temperatures were much warmer during the 1930s, with the warmest year being 1934. This was 1998 over here, about half a degree cooler. But not surprisingly, NASA altered their data, and they erased the warmth of the 1930s and 1940s. By 2019, they turned the cooling trend into a warming trend. In the 1999 graph, NASA showed cooling from 1930 through the end of the 20th century. But in the 2019 graph, they reversed it and turned it into warming. Once again, we see the same pattern of data tampering by climate scientists in order to achieve a desired result. These graphs are from the official U.S. government national climate assessments, and they show that heat waves were much worse during the first half of the 20th century than they were during the second half. This graph is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration State Climate Summaries. It shows that the number of days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius in the United States has declined sharply since the 1930s. Hot afternoons show no correlation with carbon dioxide and show the opposite trend of the hockey stick. Temperatures were very warm during the 1930s and 1940s. In 1939, the leading Arctic expert, Dr. Hans Alman, said all the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting. It may, without exaggeration, be said that the glaciers of Greenland, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. 
In 1954, it was reported that temperatures at Spitsbergen had warmed 18 degrees since the year 1910. Much of the first half of the 20th century was actually quite warm. In 1922, it was reported that except over a small area, it's generally understood the glaciers of the world are retreating to the mountains. The Jacobshaven Glacier in Greenland had retreated four miles since 1850, and the East Glacier in Spitsbergen had retreated more than a mile. In 1911, grave news about glaciers was reported. The glaciers were disappearing up into the mountains. Alaska's largest and most famous glacier, Glacier Bay, retreated tens of miles between 1780 and 1860. This is not at all compatible with Michael Mann's hockey stick. In 1902, it was reported that the famous glaciers of the Rhone had shrunk several thousand feet in the last 20 years. In 1922, it was reported that there was a radical change in climatic conditions in the Arctic with unheard of high temperatures. Great masses of ice had been replaced by moraines of earth and stones, while at many points, well-known glaciers have disappeared entirely. 100 years ago, glaciers in Glacier National Park were melting so quickly, scientists predicted they would be gone by the year 1950. But the glaciers in Glacier National Park didn't disappear, and over the last 30 years, they've actually grown larger. This was the Grinnell Glacier in 1991, and this is what it looks like now. National Geographic showed the rapid retreat of glaciers in Austria during the first half of the 20th century. Dr. Hans Allman showed very rapid warming in the Arctic from 1890 through 1940. He also showed the rapid retreat of glaciers in Norway from 1869 through 1946. But Earth cooled very rapidly from 1940 into the 1970s, and by the 1970s, scientists were worried about a new ice age. There's lots of evidence supporting Breffa's temperature reconstruction, which showed 1940s as being extremely warm, and rapid cooling after that into the 1970s. Michael Mann's hockey stick does not correlate at all with the behavior of glaciers. If this graph were accurate, that would require that glaciers melt when it's cold and they grow when temperatures are much warmer. Briffa's graph is much more credible. Let's look at one very warm year from Briffa's graph, 1878. During the winter of 1877 to 1878, there was no winter weather recorded in Minnesota. Australia was reporting phenomenal heat at that time as well. In the 1995 yearbook, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology said the highest temperature ever recorded in New South Wales was 52.8 degrees Celsius on January 17, 1877. Between 1875 and 1878, severe droughts ravaged India, China, parts of Africa, and South America. Tens of millions of people died from the heat wave and drought from 1876 to 1879. In the year 2000, NASA showed that 1878 was the warmest year prior to 1980. And NASA also showed no warming from 1870 through 1975. But not surprisingly, NASA altered their data. By the year 2017, they had erased 1878 and created a fake warming trend which didn't exist in their earlier data set. We see the same pattern of agenda-driven data tampering and fraud from government agencies over and over again. And Michael Mann shows the very warm weather of the late 1870s as being among the coldest years on record. But Michael Mann's rewrite of history won't bring the tens of millions of people who died in the heat wave and drought back to life. Briffa's temperature reconstruction was far more credible than Michael Mann's hockey stick, but it didn't suit the United Nations agenda, so they didn't use it. Mike's nature trick in hiding the decline will be remembered in history alongside Charles Dawson's Piltdown Man. But Michael Mann's abuse of science is far worse than Charles Dawson's, because Michael Mann is hurting billions of people with his fraud. Essential energy supplies are being shut down around the world and energy is becoming too expensive for poor and middle class people. This is a direct result of Michael Mann's work and hopefully after the new Congress convenes next year, Michael Mann will be held responsible for what he did. Michael Mann appears to be concerned about this and has been tweeting frantically. He says that if Republicans win a democratic election, that would be losing our democracy. It would actually be a victory for democracy and hopefully the beginning of the end of Michael Mann's reign of terror on climate science.
Toto's been pulling back the curtain on the modern Piltdown Man for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Tokianopla, on the web at rollclimatescience.com.